very different. Welcome into Illini Drive. I am Alec Bussey, your host for the Tuesday Thursday show, joined by I think our fairly now regular Thursday night crew. Nithin, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Happy to be back. Happy to yeah, be back on the show. I like having talk you. some Illinois basketball, baseball. It's yeah. an exciting day. I like to, I like having you on the show. You have good takes. Carson, how are you? I'm doing good. How well. are you this morning? Uh, you know, it was tough getting waking up. I don't, you know, just one of those long nights, but I'm ready to go. Gabby, how are you? Are you re- ready to produce a fantastic show today? So ready, love it. Wow, that was actually some enthusiasm. Not a, not a huge eye roll today. I just to woke up show. from a nap. How, so. how was the nap? It was fine. Did you get some good REM sleep? Probably not. I slept way too long. No, that means you probably did get REM sleep. Yeah, but you're not supposed to get that. Like, you're not supposed to get REM sleep during the day because now I'm not going to be able to sleep. You're supposed night. to take, like, short naps. Pretty yeah. Good. yeah I it? set my alarm like for hours. 20 minutes, and I slept two hours. Oh, that's the worst. But I knew, I know I do it every time. I set my alarm, I try. And then, like, I wake up. Do you, like, can you go to, like, a deep sleep, though, in 20 minutes? Oh, yeah. Oh, see. I, oh, like, I'm out. I'm, like, half asleep. Oh, no. So I, I can, can go to a deep sleep in minutes? five minutes. Oh, jeez. It's because I'm tired all the time. Okay. Are you guys nap people? Yes. Every day. Every day. It used to be. But the problem is I have the same thing as Gabby, <laughs> where I'll take it, and I'll go for, like, an hour and a half, and then I just feel terrible the rest of the day. Yeah, same. I'm not a nap But I person. take my naps at, like, in the evening. That's the worst. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. And I can't break the cycle, but then I get all my work done at night. Like, after I'm literally, I do this, I'm going to make dinner, go to the gym, and do my homework all past 6 o'clock. Are you up till, like, 2 in the morning? Yes. Oh, jeez. Every, every day. I mean, I, I also fra- don't, st- I don't have to start my day every, any day until, like, 10 a.m. Okay, that's nice. But then, because I was still up till 2 or 3 a.m., my body still knows I was up that late, no matter how many hours of sleep I got, so I'm still always tired the next day. Oh, it's like a cycle at this point. So it's like this endless cycle of me always being tired. My body's gotten used to this idea of, like, staying up till, like, 2 a.m., like, at least one on a regular basis. Like, because I live in a frat house, and, like, Mm -hmm. I just want to hang out with my friends. Like, we're up late all the time. And now it's just gotten to the point where, like, it becomes 1 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, Oh crap! Like it's one a.m. and I have class at nine, so I should. Yeah, probably Yeah, see, that's go to all bed. great until I'm up to like three or four every night. That's my problem. It's like there will be nights, yeah. like at least twice a week, I'm up till four a.m. What are you doing? Homework, articles, internships, TikTok, TikTok, occasionally out. Do you do the thing where you're like going to sleep at two in the morning, but you stay in bed for another like hour and a half? Yes. I do that oh, I'm not one of those people. Oh, okay. I'm no, dead. like I habit. will lay that's in really, my bed. That's a really, really, that's bad, a really bad, bad habit. habit. Yeah, I lay habit. in bed for like two hours before I actually. Yeah. Or it just depends on the night. Like if I'm finishing an, like a homework assignment at like three a.m. or three thirty, like no, I gotta skip the mm-hmm. TikTok hour long <laughs> thing for the night. But see, no, I'll be honest with you. I refuse to download TikTok because I one I just don't want to get addicted to it because I feel like it's the it's, same thing as Vine, but it's just Vine, not as great. But not as great, but you still get addicted. Don't never do. Yeah, it. I'm not gonna get it. Two, I spend enough time on social media already with yeah. Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. I really need to delete TikTok, but like that's that's like my guilty pleasure. Except it takes out like three hours of my day. Anyways, yeah, let's let's get to the show. <laughs> All right, so we've got. Big Ten basketball power rankings, we're going to do those. Um, I think it was this crew that actually did that um, a week or so ago. So we're going to do those again because there's been some updates, some changes, some wins, some losses in the Big Ten in the last week or so. We are then going to talk about the NFL, if you haven't heard. The owners today, they passed the new CBA, which would change the playoff structure and uh, allow the players to get a little bit more money. Now it's up to the Players Association to decide if they want to pass it. And then we're going to end the show with a little Illini baseball, Illini softball talk, and then we're going to get our weekend picks in. And last time I checked, there's a top five matchup, top three matchup this Saturday in the Big 12. So we're going to give our picks for that as well. All right, so let's start with the Big Ten basketball power rankings. Obviously a good week for Illinois, a pretty lazy week for Illinois. Their only game being on Tuesday when they beat number nine Penn State. Illinois, I would assume, is going to get back into the rankings just a refresher. Maryland is top as at the top of the Big Ten with a two-game lead. Penn State is in second still. And then there's a massive clump of teams tied for third place. There's five teams, four teams tied for third place. Um, so it'll be interesting to see your guys' rankings for some of those teams. So let's get to it. 
Maryland is definitely first for me, and I don't really think it's up for debate right now. When you have a two game lead in the in the best league in the country, they're starting to really take a hold of it. And I think a lot of people, especially myself, I think Maryland might be a team that could actually make a Final Four run. And I know a week or so ago we were saying, I don't know if a Big Ten team has an opportunity to do that um, or if a Big Ten team is good enough to do that. But Maryland is really good. Right now they're number seven in the country. Um, The Ken Palm loves them. The net rankings love them as well. I think that Anthony Cowan is an elite guard that can carry a team there, and he has a really good lottery pick in Stick Smith uh, playing the five who runs the floor well, plays good defense, very good athlete. I think it's Maryland is head and shoulders the best team right now in the Big Ten. Yeah, I don't even think there's really a debate. Like, they've won nine straight. Uh, Illinois had a double-digit lead on them, completely blew it, and it kind of just felt like Maryland controlled that game even when they were down. I mean, Michigan State in that game, it was close. They had a lead for a while, but once again, Maryland just took over at the end. They're one of those teams that, in late game situations, I really trust them. I uh, I was watching the game. I actually went home for the weekend, and I was watching it with my dad who went to Michigan State. And I literally said like ten seconds before, like Cowan for the three, and then he made it. You know, Jeez. it was just amazing. You know, down by seven with two minutes left, it was like no no big trouble. Cowan's weird because like if you look at his numbers, like his shooting splits aren't that good, but then you just watch him, and it's like you can't guard this guy. And he consistently gets the basket, and he consistently shoots really well from beyond the arc. No, he's clutch. Yeah, I think hands down it's Maryland. And I think for them to be on a nine-game winning streak right now is honestly just insane with obviously the great teams in the Big Ten they're playing. I'm just looking at Sunday for Maryland, and they play number 25 Ohio State, who's kind of like – they're good. They're good. I don't know how good they really are. I personally haven't watched them too much, but I just, I don't know, something in me has a hard time trusting them as like a top 25 team, but it's at Ohio State, so I think that'll be a good test for Maryland just to kind of see where they're still at and where if they're still improving or if they're kind of just like stagnant right now. Because I think, you know, they played Northwestern, Tuesday and obviously didn't beat them by too much in Maryland. They only beat them it was a by really close game. what? It was a really close game. Yeah, they beat them by nine points, which is a fair lead. But against got... Northwestern, who's bottom of the pack in the Big Ten, I think that's really. I just, I'm not gonna say Final Four yet. I'm gonna stick to Elite Eight with my pick on where the farthest team in the Big Ten can go, and I agree, Maryland. But I just, I don't know. You're still kind of having those close games. They beat Nebraska by two Two. points, okay? I feel like this is very similar to Illinois' stretch of games where, yeah, they won seven in a row, but a lot of those are really close games. And I'm not going to discount that stretch at all because that was a really impressive stretch by the line but I'm just still... Obviously, Maryland, number one in the Big Ten by far. I'm going to agree with everybody on that. I'm just not – I'm not going to put them in the Final Four It depends. Yet. Like, if they get, like, a two seed in the East with, like, San Diego State, you know, the chances are much better than if they're, like, in Kansas's in, like, the yeah. Midwest. Their so, chances of getting a one seed went up a lot last night with Duke yeah. losing, especially if Maryland wins the Big Ten regular season or finds a way to win it outright by winning the Big Ten tournament as well. I think there's. I think they probably would end up getting a one seed. Really? Who would they overtake though? But they, Can- Kansas, Baylor, San Diego State, Gonzaga. Those four teams are all. I think one there. of those two teams in the Big Twelve could fall. I think you could see Kansas maybe not get it if Maryland wins the Big Ten outright. If they, yeah, if they win out, I think there's a chance. Yeah. I think if they lose any of their games, yeah, that's yeah. really hard. That was kind of what I was saying too. All right, so second, I think this is where it gets really hard, which is really funny. Um, I actually am. I think I'm gonna put Michigan State second. They're ranked right. They're ranked 11th in the Ken Palm. They're 17 and nine. Um, you know they're still really efficient offensively. They're the 18th best offense in terms of efficiency in the country according to Ken Palm. Their defense is even better. It's 15th. Um, I really like Michigan State. I still think they're a really good team. I don't know if they're good enough to make a deep run to like the Final Four, but. If things fall right, they get a couple good matchups. I still think they could make an Elite Eight run. Um, I could see them winning the Big Ten tournament as well, though. I, th- I think Cassius Winston is one of the best players in the country. And when you have Cassius Winston, 
and you combine that with Tom Izzo, I think you can create some magic I think late the, in the season. I think the fear is that what happens when Cassius Winston doesn't play well. Because mm-hmm. there really isn't a second option for this team like there mm-hmm. has been in the past when there was like Miles Bridges, Jaron Jackson Jr. a couple years ago. But now it's just all on Cassius. Mm-hmm. He hasn't been as good as he has in the past, but he's still been really good this season. Mm-hmm. And it's basically on his shoulders to carry this team. Like, yeah, there's a bunch of nice young talent, like a bunch of sophomores, mm-hmm. and but there's not like that one go-to They're guy. They're all role players, fans. really, right now. No, like, like uh, Aaron Henry, everybody loves Aaron Henry, but I don't know. He's up and down sometimes. Tillman misses a lot of layups. But Izzo's gotten to Final Fours as a seven seed, mm-hmm. a five seed twice. Like this is Made a team it last that, year. They made it last year, beat Duke, so I wouldn't count out Michigan State. I don't, I don't, I can't decide where I'm at with the rankings right now because I'm just trying to look at everybody's schedule. Iowa, I'm not counting Iowa out yet of like being in the top five, but they do have a pretty tough schedule these next couple of games. Illinois honestly has the easiest schedule, but they've also had a really tough schedule in their like mid stretch. I do, I don't. Even after watching Penn State, I still can't decide how I feel about them. But they have a tough three games. They play Rutgers at home, away at Iowa, and Michigan State at home. Something in me, I feel like Penn State's going to stick number two. I don't know. I feel like they're going to get back on track. Illinois was, obviously, that was a really good game. I know we, me and Alec were here Tuesday when we were, watching the game while the radio show is going on. But I feel like Penn State's going to stick it out. I think, personally, I think it's going to be Michigan State probably third. Okay, so you have Michigan State two, Penn State second. No, I have Penn Yeah, yeah, Penn yeah. State second, Michigan State third. Okay, so I think the three spot is really difficult um, because there are so many teams that are 9-6. and six. There's Iowa's 9-6, and six, Michigan State's 9-6, and six, um, Illinois is nine and six. Wisconsin's nine and six. So you've got four teams that are nine and six, um, and then Rutgers and Michigan are either nine and seven or eight and seven. So they're right there in that clump. Um, if Iowa wins tonight against Ohio State, and I think they're picked to win, they're up big right now. They are. What's the score? They're up eighteen five. Okay. If Iowa stays that way, I think I'll put Iowa third. Um, because I think Iowa's good. Now, I'm not going to be surprised if the classic Fran McCaffrey collapse at the end of the season happens because it just seems to happen every single year. But there's something about this Iowa team that's just different. And I think it's it resides in Luca Garza and the fact that Fran McCaffrey has never had a player like him where you can give Luca Garza the ball 20 times a game and you know he's going to score at least 20 points. And you know he's going to make around half of those shots. He's not going to kill you on the defensive end. He's going to grab a lot of boards. Um, I think there's something about this Iowa team that keeps them in it longer than other Iowa teams of the past. So I'm going to put Iowa third because I think they do win tonight. Um, And I trust Luca Garza and Joe Wieskamp a lot. This is tough for me because... I think Luka Garza is the best player in the Big Ten. I think that's, like, without a question. I think he's one of the best players in the country. I love his play style. But there's something about Iowa that I I don't trust the it's rest that of the team. Iowa, yeah. It's that Iowa collapse. You're yeah. just waiting for it to happen. Yeah. Like, we've seen it already. They've lost games they shouldn't have lost. But then somehow Luka Garza wills them to these games that they shouldn't win. I think Penn State's the third best team mm-hmm. just because they have more options. And there's – I don't know, there's an energy with that team when you watch them play that's a little bit different than other teams. I feel like Illinois has a higher ceiling than either of them, though. Like, like maybe, like, right now, I wouldn't put Illinois three, but, like, if Io has a huge game and Kofi, like, I think that's, like, a very good one-two duo. I just think Luca Garza, like, the guy can take over the game from any spot on the floor, and I don't think Illinois has one guy like that. Io's the closest thing but he doesn't have the ability to stretch the floor the way that Luka Garza has, and especially as a big, like, that's really valuable. The thing with Iowa, though, is they're not that good on the road at all. That's what – that is, yeah. uh, that is like, the unexpected thing with Iowa is that they're not great on the road. And I'm happy you hit on that, Carson, because their road record is 4-5, and five, which is not good at all. 
actually. They it, do only have two more road games. They have two more road games, two more home games at Michigan State and at Illinois. Two really tough road games, but you've also seen Illinois struggle to defend their home court lately, which obviously needs to be corrected. But that's just, I wanted to jump in about Iowa. Is I don't, I they have, Michigan State, Penn State, Purdue, and Illinois after tonight um, against Ohio State. I see them only winning two games out of those. So which ones? I see them winning. See, I don't know because I see them w- beating Purdue at home. Or like I was at home against Purdue. I see that. I don't – maybe Penn State because they're at home. But I think they'll win their home games for the rest of the year. So that's two. The, Including yeah. today, that's three. They're going to finish 21 and 10. Okay. I think the road record, though, is unfair because really, if you look at the overall standings, only Penn State has an above 500 record on the road. This is true. I mean, that's true. The, winning on the road is the hardest thing in the Big Ten this year. It's starting to get a little Every easier. Year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It has gotten easier. The yeah. start of the season was ridiculous. Oh, it was like I mean, 38 everybody was defending their home court, which is really cool to see, but... So Carson, you had I. Where'd you? What were your? So like, if I had it like right now, like yeah. snapshot, I would give it to Iowa because like, Iowa. What spot? I'd put Iowa at three. I actually think like Penn State's good and all. It just like sometimes I I don't know. I think things are missing. Like okay. I, I think Illinois thoroughly outplayed them. I think Illinois could have won Rutgers if Iowa was playing because that yeah. offense just like just went. Like, just died in the second so half. So then where do you have Penn State and Illinois? I'd put Penn State... I'm, I'm going to put Illinois 5. No, Illinois 4, Penn State 5. Really? And then I'm going to put Wisconsin... I'm going to put Michigan 6. Michigan's getting hot. Okay. I I said Maryland 1, Penn State 2, Michigan State 3. I don't know. This Michigan State, Penn State, I might flip them. I don't know. But I do think Illinois... I think I said this last time we did this. I think Illinois is four. I strongly believe that. And I think I'm going to have to throw Iowa down at five. I don't feel right doing that, but I don't know. I just feel like Penn State is better than Iowa. I think they can finish this season stronger than Iowa. Let me check out their schedule. You should at, check out Rutgers' schedule. It's brutal. Oh, really? Rutgers has been starting to yeah. fall a little bit. Yeah. And they lost last night at the rack for the first time this season against, against Michigan. Michigan is back on the come up, and I love it. Michigan's I hate good. it. I hate it. I don't know. I like this Michigan team. I hate them. Like I, Simpson, I don't like cars. Michigan. I Well, okay. Yeah. I don't like Michigan, but I I'm don't know. I'm here for the trash talk. <laughs> they keep it coming. Let's go. Okay, yeah, did he guys, crashed Did you guys car. see that story? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we talked about, about it. Yeah, we did. I just like Jawan Howard so much, and I, I want him to have a good first year. See, but you know, I like him, but then I realize he coaches at Michigan. I know. Like, I don't like Michigan. Exactly. I don't like Michigan, <laughs> but. Dude, John Beeline to Northwestern or somewhere? No, it's Indiana. No, no. Is it Indiana? Indiana? I keep hearing Indiana, but I heard like BC. He's not leaving the NBA, I don't think. What? what? He, he lost he got, his job. He I know. He ain't staying with the Cavs. No, no. He's and the Cavs literally, I, the Cavs said that. That just to keep him busy. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. They're paying I too much money than that. He's not, never yeah. coached, like, college you think he's, and NBA. But you, I don't. I can see why he would go back to college, but I don't think he left college to come right back. I think he like well, had this itch. Was, I don't think his plan was to suck. Well, I has. know, I know. Well, well it was uh. more than that though. It was a lot of like internal conflict. Not why? Really. Yeah, it, because the players didn't like how he ran. Yeah, it. He ran exactly. it like a college and program. And he mm-hmm. said some pretty old school things. Like that was never gonna work out. He's yeah. never coached in the NBA. He's a college guy. He's a great college coach. No, he is. He's one of the best college. If coaches, Brad right? was terrible, I'd fire Brad and try to get him down here. But. All right, we're going to go to break. We're going to come back and keep this going because I think it's fun. Um, so, yeah, it is Illini Drive. Welcome back into Illini Drive. It is your host, Alec Bussey. Gabby decided she didn't want to talk about Big Ten basketball anymore, so we're not going to talk Big Ten basketball okay, anymore. No. Said she wants to talk Illinois baseball and softball, which I'm honestly okay with because it makes me... They play tomorrow. We have to talk about them. Relax. Well, don't throw me under the bus. All right. Sorry I like to give even coverage to all the Illinois sports. 
All right, well, by that logic, do you want to talk about women's swim? They're not in season right now. All right, would you like to talk about gymnastics? Yeah, actually, I can talk about gymnastics. Go. We're not talking about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. let's talk right. about Illinois baseball. You want to start baseball? Yeah, let's start, right, baseball. let's start baseball. All right, so baseball opening weekend was last weekend. They went one and two, I believe. Um, they were projected to finish sixth in the Big Ten coming into the year by the fellow Big Ten coaches next to Dan Hartley. I think they got moved up to fourth. Oh, I saw six. I don't know if that's okay. true, though. Um, so, Gabby, they play tomorrow. They got another weekend series They're in North Carolina. What are your expectations for this baseball team this weekend? Personally, I feel like college baseball, especially for all of the schools that aren't in the south or like out west where it's really warm, really struggle at this time of the year because they've been stuck in a f- indoor football facility or some sort of indoor facility where all the southern schools that you're going to play have been playing outdoors and on their fields and playing baseball indoors just really isn't that feasible. So I wouldn't Illinois always seems to start slow in baseball. They always do. They had a really hot start last season. That's true, they did. For the first time in a while. But 2015, they had one too, but that's yeah. in 50 games, so like it didn't really count. Yeah, so I think, I don't know, I think you're seeing a more normal start for the season. I think there's just higher expectations just because they did start so strong last season. But yeah, so they went one and two last weekend. You know, Hartlib said to expect to see a way more ready, different team this weekend, which I like the sound of that. They played tomorrow, their first game at 10 a.m. Um, Central Time against West Carolina down in Myrtle Beach. Lucky them. Um, I feel like this will – I think this can be a win. Um, Who's starting? Let's see. They had it, and I just saw it. They play some really small schools. I think – oh, Jimmy Burnett. I think is getting his, oh no. Yeah, Jimmy Burnett is getting his first career start tomorrow. I think that'll be interesting. I He came in as relief one of the games last weekend. Did okay, did solid. Um, Jimmy was is projected in this year's draft because he's a junior, so he's projected pretty high for the Big Ten pitchers. But you saw... Last weekend, hitting wise, obviously, Brandon Kumia is still a really good hitter for the Illini. He coming off one weekend had a 429 batting average, which is pretty solid, I would say. Um, I think he's one of those players who's going to continue to progress. He had a really good freshman season, and so I think it's key for him to keep going because. You, know, you don't want to have that. You don't want to peak freshman year in college, obviously. So I think that's really important. He's also a really good fielder playing shortstop right now. Um, Brody Harding made his Illinois collegiate debut. He is a second baseman and shortstop. You know, most of them like can play both positions, obviously. But I, he started at second for the line. I had two hits, so decent. But I think he's out there more as a really good fielder. He's a pretty strong fielder. He's one of the top ranked shortstops coming out of Illinois as like a prospect, obviously. One of the things that I was kind of surprised by was Cam McDonald had just one hit all weekend. And he was, I think he had a better batting average or around equal than Brandon Comilla last year. He was one of those, another freshman who had a really big impact left fielder. Now he's up to third base. I think that's what he originally played in high school, is, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. So he's back to third base. Maybe just, I don't know, trying to navigate back to his normal position. Hasn't been too focused on hitting. But I'd really like to see a little more from him this weekend just because he had such a big impact last year. But I think you're still seeing the team figure out pitching. And Alec, you mentioned at the break, they got a new pitching coach. And obviously you had Ty Weber come out strong. He's, you know, what is he? He's a junior. Yeah. He yeah, junior. So he'll, um, he's a veteran. He's been there. He was good last season. He was one of their main starters. And then you see some new names like Cole Kirsch, Kirschiper. Anybody want to jump in on that one? I don't know. He's a freshman. Number two left-handed pitcher in Illinois by Prep Baseball Report. He got some action. I think he's might be starting. I think he's starting Sunday because then you have Ty Weber starting Saturday. 
which I think is a really good call by the Illini. Also, it looks like, according to Illinois' Twitter, they're going to have the Myrtle Beach Pelicans bat dog. Big fan of that, by the way. Love that. I love that. And shout out to Brett Moore. He's the baseball SID. He's awesome. So I'm sure he was on top of that. But I don't know if you guys have, if you guys have kept up with baseball, if anybody has anything else to add. But I think it's going to come down this weekend to stronger pitching. And I'd like to see some of someone like Cam McDonald kind of step up, maybe get some big hits. You know, he was really good last year. He's quick. So I think that'll be big if the line I can pull that together. The thing with pitching and the hitting right now is that the pitching is always way ahead of the bats early in the year because it's just, I mean, regardless of the cold weather, which they're not playing in because they're playing in the South, hitters are still getting their time back and they're getting adjusted back to hitting outside of a cage, which is difficult to do. Um, so don't put too much stock in the numbers that guys put up in the first couple weeks of the season. It's very similar to Major League Baseball where you see guys <laughs> struggle a little bit in March when they play in March, the last week or so in March, and then the first week or two in April. Um, so don't put too much stock into that. That's why I'm not super concerned about Cam McDonald's No, definitely that first not. Weekend. It'd just it's, be nice to see yeah, a couple more hits. It's also why I'm not super concerned. It's also why I'm not putting a whole bunch of stock into Brandon Comia having a good weekend yeah. last weekend hitting over 400. Um, just because, like I said, it, there's guys who are more ahead of others, and there's guys who take a little bit more time to get their timing back and get reacclimated to uh, the game and playing on a weekend basis. So uh, definitely agree. Um, don't put too much of a stock in that. And then I think another intriguing piece is Kellen Sarver. See what he's able to do this weekend. Um, so, yeah, that's all I really got. All right, Carson, you want to hit on some softball? Yeah, okay, so softball. Carson two, covers softball right now. I cover now. softball for the Daily Line. I read my articles every Tuesday and Sunday. Um, <laughs> the Illinois softball team started off really good. They started 4-0, and and it was mostly because they're pitching. Like, they weren't hitting at all. And then they went down to a tougher tournament. Now, oh, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and they just got manhandled the first three games. They scored, like, two runs. Then, finally, in the fourth game, the bats came alive. Pretty much it was just with one grand slam. So it was kind of like without that grand slam, they're still, like, in the same dire situation. So this Illinois team, you know, I don't know about the bats this year. <coughs> they're going to really struggle. They're going to have to really rely on Sickles a lot. Like, she's pretty good. She, uh, her first weekend... She pitched Incredible. 15 and two-thirds in uh, scoreless. Yeah. She came back down to earth, like, a little bit this past weekend, but that's to be expected. And I was talking to Coach Perry, and um, she likes the team. She knows it's, like, it's kind of young, but she understands that, like, the hitting's been an issue. With her, she just wants them to be really aggressive, which they haven't been. They've been very passive at the plate. Yeah, I think it's hard. I covered this team last year, and you had – um. My gosh, why am I drawing a blank on everyone's names? Do you know any of the softball? Do I know like do literally know? Do do just all of the the yeah. team last year. I literally covered them for so long, and I know all of them so well. Avery Steiner, she's she's good. well, she's, she's bad. like Dustin Madroya of softball. That's a really really good you like comp. It? I like Wait, that. What'd you say? That's funny. She's That's like, good. Yeah, Dustin Madroya, the Boston second baseman. Okay. That's yeah, she's really, really good. She's <laughs> quick. She's a really good infielder, too. Okay, here we go. So you had Veronica Rulius last year, who she could— she was one of those players who hit a lot of bombs. Not to— I mean, she wasn't the quickest on the team, but she was also, like, a, like she was a veteran, so she was a really smart runner. You had—oh, Kiana Sherlin. That's who I could not think of. She was their top hitter alongside Annie Fleming. And I know Veronica Rulius was a top hitter, too. They had Carly Thomas as well. She was one of their top hitters. They Their lineup was so stacked last year with players that were quick and that could hit really hard balls. And so I think that's probably why they're kind of struggling right now because a lot of the girls in the lineup were not in the lineup last year. They're either freshmen or they were on the bench last year just because last year's senior class was so strong. I mean— Kiana Sherlin, Carly Thompson, and Annie Fleming were, like, insanely good at the plate. They just didn't really always have the defense last year. They didn't really have consistency 
um, on the mound and in the infield, outfield. So I think it's kind of like that weird overlapping period where now the defense is more of the solid point than the offense on the team. I think the bats will start to come. I don't think they're going to be as good as a hitting team last as they were last season, just because they had so many senior veterans who, you know, knew what they were doing. And the college is a way different experience than high school, and you're seeing a lot of freshmen play for this team right now. I know we said Delaney Rummel, she Big Ten co-freshman of the year. So she's um, this past week of the year, oh, my gosh, Big Ten co-freshman of last week. Um, so I think she's one of those bright spots as a freshman, but – I don't see them fixing their hitting problems this weekend. No, me neither. All right. We're going to come back from the break, and we're going to talk NFL potential playoff changes. The players may be getting some benefits in maybe an extra week to the season. It is Illini Drive. Welcome back into Illini Drive. Um, we had a really interesting conversation during the break. Gabby thinks saunas are raunchy. No, um, don't say it like she's that. Seen raunchy scenes, I've seen raunchy. I've seen raunchy people in the sauna, but I love going in the sauna at the art, catching there in like two and a half hours. You see like a Fredo in there, just like with a big hairy chain. Oh, not with a big hairy chest and stuff. I did. This guy was reading the newspaper last night. He was in there for at least like. 45 minutes. That's just, just not camped good. Out, just camped out reading the newspaper. He was lounging, too. Like, his legs were up. This man was, like, camped out, parked out in the sauna at the Ark last night, and I loved it for him. Go I'll ahead. be honest with you. I think saunas are nasty. They are. There's, oh, my God, so much bacteria. Disgusting. But you know what? I feel cleansed. Yeah. You feel cleansed coming out of a dirty place. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I, it's so true, though. Like, you, you feel do you like understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, you're, you're like dripping, yeah, you're dripping sweat. sweat. Everything feels like it's coming out of yeah. you. Yeah. It just feels like like every you. bad decision you made ever just is like <laughs> coming out of your body. It's amazing. Unless it's a raunchy situation. Then, you, then they're just kind of going <laughs> back Then it in. just builds into more God, raunchy. I can't believe you used that word. That's so funny. <laughs> I love the word raunchy. You should put it in an article. Oh. Trent's defense was raunchy <laughs> against <laughs> against Nebraska. He was in the face of the Nebraska shooters. That's not raunchy though. Like really tight off ball defense. Yeah, <laughs> that's not raunchy. Would be raunchy is like 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 Kofi mixing it up in the paint. Like if Kofi got into a fight. Kofi yeah, that could be raunchy. That could be raunchy. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Maybe or it could be like bad too. Like yeah, so like a fight would be raunchy. No, but I'm saying just straight. <laughs> it could be raunchy if it gets raunchy. I mean, is raunchy going to be good? Like, it doesn't really sound like No, wait, raunchy's not good. You just have to, like, use it in the right context. Like, the sauna was raunchy last night. <laughs> if you put raunchy in an article, would Megan edit it out? I hope not. Oh, she definitely I mean, does. next year, who's going to be the one to edit it out for you? It sounds like you might be the head editor, so like honestly. So if I want to put raunchy as a headline, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I went raunchy, raunchy season opener against Illinois State. I'm doing it. No one's gonna stop me until Great G McDonald choice. yells at me. Great word choice. Nah, G would laugh. No, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. No, she wouldn't. She would raunchy. I like the way you say that too. Can you say it again? Raunchy. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? You like the make pirates it two words. of the pot. Here, let me put into. Sports context. The Pirates are going to have a real raunchy season. And that's the team. Right. Victoria F. from The Bachelor, raunchy. Very Perfect. Raunchy. Victoria F. Very from raunchy. Very raunchy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing knows. Okay. All right, we got to yeah. NFL. All right, so you may think these new NFL rules are raunchy. I, on the other hand, don't. I, I feel like, like we're overusing raunchy I know. Now. I know. <laughs> I'm, just, now I'm just messing with it because Gabby can't stop laughing. Okay. So if you've missed this, the NFL um, proposed a couple changes to a new collective bargaining agreement that they have put out in the last like 48 hours. The owners actually passed it earlier today. A couple of the changes are um, one fewer preseason game, so four games down to three games. You see that game that disappears appear um, at the end of the season. So you would have a 17-game regular season compared to just 16 and then playoff scheduling is a little bit different 
Um, there would now be seven playoff teams compared to just six, and only one team gets a bye. The team with the best record in the AFC and NFC would then get the bye. Um, guys, I'm personally in favor of it. Like I said, I think that no one's going to complain about an extra week of football. Like, who cares about the preseason? No one watches it. Like, it's not it's not entertaining ever. Um, and nothing like you and I were saying earlier that the preseason is there more or less for organizations to just figure out who they want to cut. Mm-hmm. Um, especially the last one, um, to get down to the 53 man roster. Yes. Was this something that like has been known about and I've been living under a rock? No, okay. This is pretty Cause new. this was like pretty was, like, like surprising. Well, it's been rumored for a while. Like they've been talking yeah. about like, yeah, but I didn't hear anything like, super serious about it until yeah. yesterday. I just want to make sure yeah, I wasn't Schefter like. Yeah, just l- dropped did, did it kind of. Yeah. If we can use that. It's not as good as it, Woj Bomb. It doesn't bomb. sound right. No, not as good as Woj Bomb. Woj Bomb is the best. Anyway, um, I like it. I think it's cool. I'm a person who feels like some leagues have some leagues, specifically the NBA, have too many teams in their playoffs, um, and their playoffs are too long. I like the NFL's playoffs now, but I think you can add a team and it still is okay and it's fine. I'm also okay with just one team getting a bye. I am so for this change. Because the Steelers Seven would have been years in the ago. Okay, look at this article. Well, I'll show are, are you. Are you guys. on the ringer right now? Ex- no, oh, I'm on the Trib mind. Live, Carson. <laughs> it I'm says expanded <laughs> NFL playoffs would have benefited <laughs> Steelers over last decade. 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 Yeah, but they're eight and eight. They would have got absolutely. Actually, smoked. I think they, they would have not- made it. I think they would have made it. It would have been Steelers Rams this year. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, it says would have benefited Steelers over past decade. The only pro- that is ten years. The only problem I have with this. Is I don't want a whole bunch of eight and eight teams getting yeah. into the playoffs because like a get, whole uh, bunch too. Yeah, but like you look at like the NFC East, like that's just such a bad division every single year. And there's like one or two of those teams that's like above five hundred or at five hundred every single year. Like I don't want to see the eight and eight Cowboys in the playoffs. I don't. Wait, hold on. I don't know if I read this right. Are there two teams from each? No, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, seven no. teams from each conference. There's oh, three whoo. wild cards, right? Yeah, yeah. There's three wild cards. Okay, that's what I thought, but then I don't know. Something you said made me think I was going crazy. Continue. I, I like it. I I'm, think I'm, I'm not a fan personally. I, okay, like, why I, are you not a fan? Well, uh, you talked about it earlier, but how? See, I love the NBA and I love the NBA playoffs, but there are too many teams in the NBA playoffs. And that's a big there's, problem. See, but I think there's too many teams because the NBA playoffs are too long. Like, the NHL playoffs are great, and I don't know how big of a hockey guy you are. I'm not a huge hockey guy. But I N- love the NHL playoffs. The NHL playoffs are probably the best of any professional sport, but it's because it's hockey and it's a different kind of but sport. But hockey's so random. Like that's, you see, That's why it's good. That's why it's good. Yeah. That's why the NBA should shrink their playoffs, and they're looking at messing with their playoffs. Shrink their playoffs or just get rid of all seven-game series and make the first series or second series five-game series. Yeah, I agree I, with that, but um, the thing that I like about the NFL and the MLB playoffs is that it's so hard to get into. Like, with six teams in the NFL out of 16 in each conference, it's really, really tough. you got to be probably a 10-win team to make it. Obviously, this year, there's nine wins. Sometimes there's less, but same thing with baseball. Like, you have to win about 90 games to get into the playoffs, and it's really hard, and that makes for the best teams making the playoffs. I hate divisions and all that. It just creates the worst, like, imbalance schedules. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not fair how, like, these teams in the NL Central or AL Central win 85 games. Then the Yankees are a wild card with, like, 100 wins. I don't know. I just never liked that. Yeah, seeding's, like, definitely an issue. Like, should they reseed? Especially in the NFL, I think, because you get those, like, the Chargers, I think, was, was last year. They were 12-4. and four. They mm-hmm. got the wild card. Yeah. I think that's a problem. Because the AFC West was really good. Right, yeah. I agree. I definitely. And then I think there's team. What was it? NFC East this year. Horrible. That, mm-hmm. like, nobody could keep. Yeah, none the, of those teams really deserve to get into the playoffs. Exactly. But one did because but of the But one did and one had a so higher seed. the Eagles have made it still? They may have, yeah. Yeah, but I was like a wild card. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? I feel like there's... Like, they got a home game because yeah. they got to play the Redskins mm-hmm. twice because they got to play the Giants twice. The one thing about this that I do actually really like... I'm, like, okay about this. I don't really have a strong opinion right now, which is I feel like you, you're the one... I'm kind of neutral about this. It's I not think, super strong. I don't know. I just like it. No, I know. I just... I'm kind of, like, in between, but I like the fact that only... There's only, like, one buy. Yeah, that's what I like. About I do it. really like that's that because cool. I like the fact that like 
You have it to makes play. you earn it. Yeah, you have to earn that one mm-hmm. buy. Yeah. I like that a lot. I and it th- keeps games more intense down the stretch That's of the season. That's what I was season. about to say. Is that like, remember the year that the Colts and the Saints were each like, like 15 and 1, 14 oh, and 2? Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were both really, really good. And like, look, they locked up a playoff spot, locked up their buy early in the year. And it was like, all right, do we rest Peyton Manning and Drew Brees or not? It might get rid of that. And I'm not for like, Making players play and get, risking their chances of injury. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, but I'm not going to say that I'm not opposed to more football at a higher level, if that makes sense. So you're going to get higher level football with better players for another week. It's also one like one more good regular season game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Too. So, but it does mess like, with the schedule, and the schedule right now is kind of perfect the way they've set it up because it's basically six games within your division. Yeah. Four games against each. Like one of the division from each. <coughs> it'd be like one teams. random game. Like, yeah. like if you're in the AFC Central, you would have to, and you came in third place, you'd have to play the third place team in the NFC something. Just one. If you're in, game. okay, yeah, you'd but play one extra nine. But how would you decide it? Like, I think it becomes a whatever little bit place you were probably in the year before. Well, that's how they do it, but they do it within their conference. If you're not playing like every division, it's a little bit more complicated because you can't just be like having the AFC North play the NFC North every year. Like, how would you divvy that up? I don't know. I don't know. You figure it out some way, somehow. Yeah, it, uh, yeah I think that is the hardest part about it is just who's going to play, like, the schedule changing. But It'd be I don't intriguing know. to see if the players agree to it. I don't think they will. I don't know if they... I, they, I think rosters would have to expand, though. That's part of it. And money yeah, would basically I, be the same. Yeah, that's the thing. I think it goes up... I think it, they would get 48.5% of total revenue under the new CBA, which is up from, like, 46. So okay. there's getting more revenue player-wise, but, like, should probably be 50-50. Yeah, it should definitely be 50-50. NBA's 50-50, I think. It might be. I don't know what Major League Baseball is. But uh, that's different because Major League Baseball contracts are so much bigger. Yeah, the CBA is confusing for... Yeah, WWE. it is. Another thing with football is that those contracts, the players, I think that they would rather have their contracts fully guaranteed than have more total revenue share. Yeah, agreed. Because so, guaranteed money is all that really matters in football. Yeah, that's true. All right. Let's do our weekend picks. We didn't give them to you last week because uh, we were doing something else. I can't remember what. Anyway, there's a lot of good games on Saturday. Um, Obviously, the headliner is Kansas traveling to Baylor. Baylor has won 22 games in a row. Longest win streak in Big 12 history. I like this game. I like Baylor. I think Baylor's good. I'm going to take Baylor. Baylor's good, but Kansas is good, too. Devon Kansas Dobbs. also won in Allen Fieldhouse. Yeah. Uh, wait, do you mean in this matchup? Yeah. Yeah, you Baylor, mean Baylor won in Allen. Allen. Baylor won. Yeah, Baylor yeah, won. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kansas. sorry. My yeah. bad. Yeah, Baylor won in Allen. My bad. Sorry. That's true, and that's like a huge win. But yeah, Devon Dotson, have you seen him lately? Yeah, he's he's been phenomenal. Really well. I'm going to go with Kansas. I'm going to go with Kansas. I think they split and set up a really good rematch in the Big 12 championship. I'm going to go with Baylor because of home. home advantage. Okay, so next one up is Tennessee and Auburn. This one's interesting. Tennessee is, like, not in the tournament, but maybe they could play their way in if they keep beating teams. They haven't been great this year. They haven't. They're 15-11, and 7-6 and six in the SEC, which is obviously not a great conference. But if they keep beating ranked teams, there's, a, there's an opportunity for them to maybe slide in. I think Auburn's going to be too much because they're at home, and I think Bruce Pearl gets them back on track. Give me Auburn. I'm so confused with Auburn this year because – they have these tight games. They have that LSU game where they were trailing for most of it, come back. Tennessee, I mean, if Lamonte Turner was playing, but he's obviously done for the year, I'd probably pick them just because I love that backcourt. But I'm going to go Auburn, too. Auburn at home, for sure. Auburn, yeah. yeah. Uh, Marquette travels to Providence. Marquette is 17-8, and eight, ranked number 19 in the country. Providence is 15-12, and 12, and they got clapped last night. I'm going to go Marquette. Yeah, George, uh, I almost said Jordan Howard. Marcus Howard, really great. Uh, I'm going to go with Marquette, too. The Big East is kind of similar to the Big Ten, where like any team can win on any given night. It's one of those really good conferences. Uh, I'm going to go with Providence. I think they'll pull off the upset at home. I was also going to go Providence just because they're at home. and I don't know. I was watching. Marquette was playing someone the other night, obviously. I forget who, but... 
I wasn't impressed. I really wasn't. So I'm going to go with Providence. They lost to Creighton yeah. and Villanova back-to-back. So Creighton was the game I was watching. They lost a home game to Creighton. Yeah, I was not impressed by Marquette at all. Yeah. So yeah, I'll go Providence. All right, next up is Houston. They travel to Memphis. Houston is ranked number 22 in the country, 21-6, and 11-3 and three in the American Conference. Memphis came into the year a top-five team in the country. They really haven't met those expectations. I feel like Penny's, when you have that much talent, eventually it works at some point. I feel like Penny might get them going here, and I think they upset Houston. Uh, this Memphis team's weird. I mean, yeah, thought, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, we thought they were going to be great with Wiseman. Um, I trust Houston, so I'm going to go Houston. I'm going to go Houston, too. I, I feel like Memphis has lost to South Florida. They've had some really terrible games. Houston's been on a roll lately. They've been killing teams. I'm going to go with Houston. Yeah, I like Houston here, too. Okay, Villanova. They traveled to Xavier. Nova got a big win last night, a 20-point win over DePaul. Um, Jay Wright's got them playing really well. Um, now Xavier's a good team. They're under 500 in the Big East, though. But that's kind of similar to the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. It's a really good league. I'm gonna go Villanova, um, and they get their 21st win on the season. I'm gonna go Xavier. I mean, I like not, like I like Najee Marshall. I think they got a good team. Villanova. I know they've been playing well lately, but they go on these streaks where they just shut down as a team. They can't score. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. It's similar to Illinois at times. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Xavier. Villanova. Yeah, Villanova. I don't really have an explanation, but I, just I, feel sh- it. I trust them on the road. That yeah. might be one of those games for Xavier where they're desperate, and that's a game that just bumps mm-hmm. them into Because they're brackets. kind of on the bubble right now. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That That's a game that you could see just them get bumped up into a tournament bracket. Florida's another team that came to the year with a lot of expectations. They're 17-9, and 9-4 and in the SEC. They travel to Rupp Arena to take on Coach Cal and the Cats. Give me Kentucky. Kentucky, I think easy. I think it's going to be a good game, but I'm, you got to go with Kentucky here. I'm going to go Tucky. Uh, Tucky, oh my gosh, Kentucky, but I think it'll be like a plus 10-point win. Hmm. Getting that half-point multiplier for the net ranking. <laughs> uh, Duke. They got clapped last night. Yeah, it was embarrassing. That might have knocked them off of a one line. Um, were they on? A, I don't think they were on a one line. Well, they, they were in the, the conversation. They were in the conversation. Um, do they get back on track at home against Virginia Tech? Uh, yes. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're too good of a team. Virginia Tech's died. Like they're done. Like Duke, Duke at home. Yeah, Duke. Oregon in the Pac-12. They take on an Arizona team that is ranked number great twenty-four matchup. in the country. It's a great matchup. Mm-hmm. It's at Arizona. I feel like Arizona is good, and it just took them a little bit of time to click on a consistent basis. I think Nico Mannion pushes them over, and I think they get the win. I love Nico Mannion too. But I hate I, him. Oh, I hate him, I, but I, I love his him. hair. I hate him, but uh, I love him. Oh, the ginger mamba. <laughs> I love Nico Mannion. I love Zeke Naji. I mean, it's one of those teams that is frustrating at times, but they're so talented. I think at home they'll win. But Peyton Pritchard, man, you got to watch out for that guy. Yeah, he's he can Illinois and Arizona met like neutral floor. Who would win? Like I if they know. had a rematch. They're yeah, whatever. Right now, Illinois, I would take Illinois. Maybe I'd probably take Arizona. I think Illinois. I just the bigs for Arizona. I would I take would Arizona match, still. Yeah. I don't know who guards Nico now. I, I still don't know who guards Nico. Io, like I don't know. You figure it out. I guess. Andres, I don't know. It's tough. I don't know. You figure it out. I'm going to go with Oregon just for fun. I'll go Oregon. Oregon's good. All right. Sunday, there's a couple of Big Ten games. Let's go through them quick. Penn State and Indiana. I'll take Penn State. Penn State. At Penn State? No, it's at Indiana. Ooh. Indiana's desperate. I'm going to go with Indiana. Gabby? Penn State. All right. Last one. Maryland travels to take on Ohio State in Columbus. Give me Maryland. Maryland. For sure. Maryland. Yeah, Maryland. I like that Ohio State team, though. All right. That's all the time we have for this week of Illini Drive. It's been a good week. We'll be back on Monday, and it's game day on Monday. Listen to our game day show with the Monday crew. It is Illini Drive.